This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Rachel Gatsona standing by. We'll take color nine now, 844-999. Ola will play Profile This coming up in minutes. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. First quick check into Mike Hawk for some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, some female football fans are angry at Target for a line of T-shirts that suggest women don't know anything about sports. Like one such shirt that says, quote, let's touch down a home run. <laughs> Yay. All right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> See, it's funny. Uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's the same spot that I got my chick manager, man. Okay. <laughs> I mean, is part of it maybe just that they don't like sports? Yeah, overwhelming. Wait a minute, any study that you do. Like my cousin, you could have picked a better shirt. My cousin has a shirt that says "Namaste" in bed. <laughs> so she's yeah. kind of making fun of yoga, right? Right. Uh-huh. I think it's pretty goddamn. Funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I even had, want one of those shirts. I had one shirt that it was the it was a silhouette of a guy kind of putting his arm around a, a chalk out not a chalk outline but a, a, a dotted line that looked like a woman and it says, "Hey, ladies, this could be you." I mean, mm-hmm. there was a ton of just dork shirts that I mean, yeah, they make me look like a goober, but they were funny, so I got them. Yeah, blame the shirts. Uh, of course, I blame the shirt. <laughs> goober, Mike. I ain't a uh, goober. Those shirts. <laughs> Stupid shirt. <laughs> You were the first can't, goober to for a candidate. Get, can't get laid because of this shirt. I don't know why mm-hmm. I'm you know what? You're right, Mike. I've been buying the wrong shirt for years. <laughs> years and years <laughs> and years. <laughs> Damn shirts. We'll say. I get more comments on the chick magnet shirt than anything else. I believe that's actually a pretty cool shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, scientists in Japan have created a new type of banana that has an edible peel. Huh. Why? <laughs> well, I don't know, but normally the peel has got a lot of nutrients in it. Still. Yeah. Are we? Is there really that much does it banana taste, does, peel trash build up? I, I never tried to taste a peel of a banana. Does it taste like banana? I well, guess. I never thought uh, that it was important that I eat it. I'm cool peeling. I'm not banana. eating that banana. Robert. It's. I mean, like, you, why don't you make the wrappers edible on candy bar? Like, just grab it and throw the whole goddamn thing in your mouth, right? There's people that'll eat Starburst in the wrapper. Okay, well, there's people that eat people? glue. Man, I knew them. They just they'd stick the Starburst right in their mouth and eat, eat it with a wrapper on it. How it's old ridiculous. were you when you knew these weird people? Uh middle school, high school. Even in high school, huh? man, I was in a small cow puncher town. Okay, <laughs> we didn't. Still, we had to take the wrapper. We had punched them. <laughs> Damn cows! <laughs> Never punched a cow, Ted. I can say that I haven't. It's exhilarating. Well, I mean, euphemistic kind of way, I certainly have. Run into a ring, slap a bull on its ass. Mm-hmm. Choke on a hot dog while watching a rodeo. <laughs> so you know you're a man right there. Yeah, living the wildlife down there. It's damn right. Pun intended. Open a beer bottle on a horn. Come here, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Airlines might uh, start making the bathrooms on planes, wait for it, even smaller to make room for more seats. Come on, man. Okay. Come on. I don't on. know how much smaller they could make them to where they could actually put in another row of seats. I don't either. Have you heard this one yet? Like, no. No. Literally, it, <laughs> the sink would be so small you could only wash one hand at a time. You're kidding me. That's what I read yesterday. Why not just hand out sanitary wipes or just have like a little hand sanitizer? The, the one airline, I forget who, I, might, I forget which airline it was, but I think they've already started retrofitting these on like the older 737. Come on, man. So the, so the people that are complaining actually are the uh, flight attendants are already like, dude, this is too small. Right. Yeah. Then charge us less. I remember the last time I was in a, a, a an airplane bathroom, I, I was glad that I just had to pee. I didn't know how anybody would sit down in that thing. It's hard enough to poop during turbulence, man. Don't make it smaller. <laughs> they got the little <laughs> oh crap handle in there. Yeah, come on. <clears throat> uh, a man posted a screenshot of an angry text that he got from his grandmother because it was 7 a.m. on her birthday and he hadn't called her yet. <laughs> Jeez. Actually, that dude's right, man. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you I mean, think? Seven o'clock. Yeah, and it's like I guess happy birthday to me since nobody called. It's like grandma. It's seven in the morning. <laughs> she's been up for two hours. No, Ted. she's been up since four. <laughs> reading a reading ARP. Yeah. ARP magazine. Mm-hmm. P- old people get up early, man. It just happens. They they can't help it. No, they can't. I mean, they do, but I mean, 
first of all, she's too old to be this upset somebody didn't call her right away. But I'm just saying, like, if it's the next day you want to give your grandson some crap, okay. Okay. But 7 a.m.? Right. I mean, I know she's up early, but you can't really think he was up. What yes, does the yes, AARP okay. uh, say the traditional dinner time is? Like, oh, <laughs> I want to get a discount. What time do I need to show up at a place? I don't know. We usually get together around 430. 430, yeah. 30, okay. I mean, what are the odds that this grandma was just punking her, her grandson? I, oh, I don't. I think this grandma's a pain in the ass. Oh. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, Mike, I dated a girl that had a pain in the ass grandma. And one day I looked at her and said, your grandmother's a bitch. <laughs> we just, I don't know, I'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> well, her grandmother would just start S to start S. And it's like, it's the grandma, so nobody in the family would say it. So one day I had a couple cocktails and I was like, I'll say it. That grandma sucks. <laughs> let, let me tell you what everybody else is still afraid to tell you. Yeah. Grandma's a bitch. You suck. <laughs> You're a bitch. I guess we got to go visit grandma. Why? She's going to piss everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to start popping off shots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's a bitch. I like it. How are you old at that age? Or rather, how are you angry at that age? If you're not a man. <laughs> you I, always ever hear about angry grandpa and grandma's the sweetest person alive. Not all of a man. I no, guess not. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I, you need to meet. I don't stop. But like my my mom had an aunt, Ellen. She was oh, a mean old lady. And a grandmother who kind of had the, the disposition of beef jerky. You know what I mean? Ooh, yeah. It was tough. Like, deep down, it was good, but, like, you had to earn the good, man. You choo, had choo, to choo, fight right. for the like, hard you, Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Backed you up. Like a Cadbury egg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Except those are sweet. And yeah, not this worth, wasn't sweet. And not worth the crunch at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, this was just salty and old. Yeah. Salty and old. <laughs> somehow good. <laughs> Teriyaki flavored. A man in Virginia no, said a... bitter flavor. <laughs> a man... Touch of kale. Smoked four times over. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. A man in Virginia set a world record by walking across 120 feet barefoot across a bed of Legos. Come on, man. I yeah. Mean, why? I don't know. Why? How many do you think were stuck to his foot? 118 of them. <laughs> I have the occasional oh, middle yeah. of the night go to the kitchen, step oh. on the kid's Lego, and it sucks, man. Now, it's not the little connectors on the top. It's those sharp friggin' corners on those things. I know this, Mike. <laughs> this is my point. I'm very familiar with the uh, the Lego situation. It's like mm-hmm. hot coals, except you can't see them until you've stepped out. Mm-hmm. And then you have to suppress a swear. That's why people have goals. <clears throat> a new study found eight of the ten most polarizing brands in the U.S. are news outlets. Who'd have thought? Oh, come on. Yeah, of course. course. Oh, no yeah. ass. Mm-hmm. The, the other two that aren't are probably on the same token there. Number one, Trump Hotels. Okay, sure. All right. And number six, I'm guaranteeing, is just within the past couple of years, the NFL. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Hell, this, I'd say the last year. The the last year only. <laughs> yeah. Just the last year, not two years ago? Well, I think there was always people that liked football that kind of didn't like Roger Goodell, like Miles and I. Sure. But the the, the way it's, the NFL has gotten this year is just mm. a whole other level. Didn't the Kaepernick stuff start up last year? It last did. Last year or the year before? It huh? did, and people were upset. I will still say when the President of the United States sits on a pulpit and calls them out, calls them something, they kind of amped right. it all up. Sure. Right. So, that, now, that's polarizing is just you like it or don't, but, right? Because I'm wondering There's if... nothing if, in between. Right. Okay. Right. Kind of Cause I'm wondering, now. Because I'm wondering with the NFL, you know, uh, uh, Green Bay fans hate Vikings fans and stuff like that. Not the same way. They have right. a mutual respect and they, you know, they know each other well. They see each other often. It's kind of, it's, it's a love-hate. Business sure. Insider posted a list of the most dangerous intersections in each state. Okay. Because we need to know. And? Do we know? Uh, no. All right. No, I wonder if that's like... Car crashes or like getting car jacked? Like, how, like, what kind of danger? That's true. There's different kinds of danger in different neighborhoods. Right? Yeah. Like, the streets are cool, but if you stop at a light, you're getting jacked. We go to, <laughs> we go to Louisiana ah, ah, ah. for this next story. <laughs> oh, not that one. Oh, 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 oh. what happened? Sorry. Ball. Give me one second. And I look, and I see one ball, and I see it's my ball. Then I see another ball, and I said, Joe, there's two balls in here. <laughs> what is that? I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Hawk. Headlines are coming up one hour from now. First, the game is on. The Men's Room presents Profile This. I am Stephen Thrill Hill. Could you please start everyone? Now, Profile This is played. I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth. 
deserve. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Mike. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Big Cholas. Hola. Hola. All right, Mike, you understand how this here game is played? Yes, I do. Fantastic. And uh, by the way, you just know morale at Taco Bell is probably pretty bad when the employees turn the food into weapons. All right. So there's a guy at his job at a Taco Bell in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and he got into an argument with his boss over having to work the morning shift. I don't know which side of the argument either one was on, but that's what they were arguing about. Now, according to the police report, she told him to, quote, stop being a crybaby. That made him so mad that he threw a hot burrito at her, which got melted cheese all over her left arm and her pants. Then he took off his drive through headset, broke that on his knee, and stormed out. The police put out a warrant for a misdemeanor assault, and now they're trying to track him down. Do you believe that this angry Taco Bell employee is black, white, Mexi, or Asian? Hmm, and that's in North Carolina? South Carolina. South Carolina? Yes. Uh, I'm kind of leading towards, kind of towards white. Uh, what do you guys think? Ah, it sounds pretty white to me, man. What did he make the weapon out of? It's a burrito. It was a burrito. It was a hot, burrito. hot cheese. Yeah, so had hot cheese on it, man. Burrito that splattered all over and the hot cheese melted down her arm burned her. Then he took off his headset, cracked it over his knee, tossed it on the ground, threw some single fingers and rolled out, man. It said adios, amigos. Did he? I'm going north of the border. Right, no, I don't. But he cracked the headset over his knee, double bird it, it was like, I'm out. I'm out, yeah, that's it. And then the cops can't track him down. I'm going to go to a place where you can have it your way. <laughs> I mean, just on that exit, like, such an ex- It's got to be black. No, I think it's white. That's a... Ah, feels a little, like, dramatic or whatever. I don't know. Crushes Something it over his knee, and he doesn't want to work the morning shift. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what do you think, buddy? I think I'm going to go with white. White final answer. Yeah. All right, we'll find out if this fine, upstanding employee was black, white, Mexi, or Asian next. That was a tease. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitch, hola. You have entered the men's room. All right, profile this. We got a South Carolina and a guy who was none too happy with his job at Taco Bell, nor his manager. And when he quit, he decided to throw a piping hot burrito filled with cheese at her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he took his headset and he slammed it on his knee and broke it in half before he stormed off. That's right. And the question we had for you, Mike, was did you believe that this employee was black, white, Mexi, or Asian? And I believe you went white. Yeah, I did. Oh, you are correct. Oh, there I go. Right. Yeah. All right. What a waste of a burrito. And a headset. Yeah, no care. I, no. I feel like their burritos are just smaller. They are smaller, yeah. but piping hot, man. And delicious. Yeah. Okay. I know. I just want to make myself feel better about eating a couple. <laughs> now for uh, all the TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, I'm again. the Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. You can never feel guilty about ordering too many things from Taco Bell. Either always do or never do. Right. Make just a decision. do it, man. Like, yeah, get right, seven like, no, things, right. six things. I know. That's what I did on New Year's. <laughs> okay. It's a meme. What like, crazy. It's okay. It's like, you got, I took a nacho cheese, a Doritos Locos taco, and a Cool Ranch one, dude. Get For it. Me and my get it. You got to yeah. try it. <clears throat> yeah. It's New Year's Eve. I was showing out. <clears throat> uh, all right. You know, I'll start by talking to Mike and remind him that years ago, because Mike's younger than us, right? He's even 10 years mm-hmm. younger than I am. Oh, he must be really young then. He's like a kid, dude. <laughs> but, Mike, you might not know this. Back in the day, you had to get DVDs to watch pornography. Now, <laughs> one of the DVDs I had featured an artist named Stormy Daniels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stormy Daniels, of course, blonde, famous for her long legs. A lot of people. Yeah, that's her. what she's famous for. Sure. Well, I, yeah, Stormy Daniels is famous for her long legs. That's well, how we all know her. That's right how now. I knew her. <laughs> that's how most of us knew her. I forget which film she was in that I had. But it was it was one of them. Did she star in it, or she was just part of it? No, no, no. She started it. Oh, okay. I think what it was, was uh, do you remember the plot? Stormy Nights. I don't know. Then you do. I mean, was she like If a you don't lawyer? remember the plot of a well, porn, like, you remember. Was she a doctor? What was going on? Did fireman come to her house? What happened? Dude, honestly, I think it was a big production one about, uh, what's the Pirates movie? 
Pirates Caribbean, of, Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean, yeah. So you got to look up Pirates of the Caribbean or something, but porn. And I <laughs> oh. think she's in it. <laughs> that might have been. Uh, I think that is as I, Pirates of the Caribbean. All right, look, I'm not that I, big. I'm not this big into pornography. Mm. All right, the, but, that, but but. I am pretty pretty sure that that was the most expensive adult movie ever made, and the reason I say this, I remember reading an article about it. Like all the like, they were actually trying to do a movie out of this. One. Why? I don't know. No one watches. But look, I want to no say, one reads Playboy for the articles. No one watches the porn for the plot. I understand that, and this is this is and Ted's right. It's not too long ago, but I'm pretty sure that was the most expensive adult film ever in production. Yeah. Because of all the special you effects. you got another name of it now. I, it's, you know, I mean, you can take a guess. It can't I be did. T- I don't think I'm right. I guess <laughs> Ass Pirates of the Caribbean, you know. What you is know it? what? I think it was just called Pirates. Oh, okay. Pirates? But I, I'm way off. She right. wasn't in that one. Okay. <laughs> that was Jesse Jane, <laughs> Tegan Presley, those kind of people. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. My bad. I just remember once, like, they would come to, like, they would send us porn. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that used Wait, to be back who the- sent you porn? You know what? All right, this, this is something you had to join. People don't just send you porn. Somebody we worked with got sent porn from from the <laughs> certain adult places, right? Okay. And maybe they're married and couldn't take it home, or were dating at the time and couldn't take it home. I see. I would take it home and collect it. Good. <laughs> Keep it for them. Like a Why did they order it? If they could, I mean, were they watching it? No, they just it sent work? it because they're oh, like, okay. you guys work at radio, blah, blah, blah. And they would come around for like tours and stuff. Like, I don't think we ever interviewed any of the porn stars. But like my buddy that works across the street, he has pictures with them. Like, okay, like right. basically, if you if you know somebody that worked in radio, they probably had these porn DVDs. Okay, like Pirates was one of them. I'm sure there was some cheerleaders involved or bad, you know, bad college students. You know, something like that. Anyhow, the point is, I just remember Stormy Daniels was in one of them. Okay, she had great freaking legs. Okay, got way off track here. So Stormy Daniels now is in the news. <laughs> now that we have some background. Right, 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 right. <laughs> she is now in the news because uh, basically you've heard this, that she had an affair with President Trump back in the day, that she was paid $130,000 to uh, write, right? And what's that? A non-disclosure agreement, yeah. correct? Mm-hmm. So what you're going to listen to here is that Inside Edition, for some reason, still went to Stormy Daniels and asked her the questions that she signed the non-disclosure agreement about. Mm. So it kind of goes as you'd expect if somebody signed one of those. Did you have a sexual relationship with Donald Trump? You can't answer that. Did, did you have any relationship with Donald Trump? Well, I think it's common, you know, by looking at photos that I've met him. So you've met him. You met him in Lake Tahoe. Is that, can you say that? You met him when you were at, at a golf tournament. That's where the photo was taken. You said that Donald Trump was chasing you around the hotel room. Did that happen? There are reports you've been paid $130,000 to be quiet. Have you been paid to keep quiet? Have you signed a non-disclosure agreement? Are you frustrated that you can't talk about these things? You clearly want to say, you, you're, you're looking at me like you can't talk. I'm, I'm taking this that you can't say anything. Is that accurate? I'm taking that as a yes. All right. You can watch the full video. She like, answers other questions. The video's over the But not Facebook about page. that. Yeah. Right. So even like me the, and Mike The were rumor saying, that you signed a non-disclosure agreement seems to be fairly true because the only things you won't answer are the, are questions the things pertaining that to what she's you got rumored. Paid right. Exactly. Like, come right. On, so man. like Mike was even saying like, well, why ask her? And I was like, you know what? To be honest, I'm not sure. Right? You can ask her once. And she mm-hmm. gave you can ask her me. once. Yeah, she, her she doesn't even, she doesn't say anything. She literally just looks at him. Right. Yeah. And just kind of like, I don't know what you want me to say. I can't non disclosure agreement. You, you know have this. every reason you to know believe this. Right, that I cashed a check and signed one of these based on the fact that the only thing I won't talk about is the thing that I'm rumored not to be able to talk about. Isn't it's, that because no, you say no, no, no right? I, yeah, no. The rest of the interview, yes. the rest of the interview is kind of crazy too because she's like, you know, obviously she met him or whatever. But you know, I want to say how old's Baron? So it was like right after that kid. 2006. Born. Right. So she had met him a while ago, but she obviously hadn't thought about it. And then he's running for president. They signed the non-disclosure. But even she said, she, mm, she said, like she has security now at her house and stuff. She's like, like this story has gotten out of control. You know what I mean? And it's got to be scary, too, because you're dealing with politics. So oh, yeah. Besides the fact whether or not you believe people in politics have the ultimate power or secret, secret society. They do. But even, look, that's what I'm saying. But take that out of it. Anytime you're dealing with politicians that are this high-powered, 
you're dealing with with a, I guess a fan base that right, be right, kind right. of rap. You know, now, again, this isn't a Trump. I'm just saying, if you're the president, there's some people that have some crazy thoughts about you, like, oh, the president's the man, like that probably will hate her now. So I think that's why she had to hire security. Yeah, I guess why she had to hire security. Yeah, the SNL skit last week, by the way, was very well done, very well too. When she's on Weekend Update, and she's like, oh, I thought you were going to get this and that. Now you get a store there. <laughs> she's kind of half drunk or whatever. I knew a girl once that just mentioned, that looking at the cover of my DVDs, how nice her legs were. Oh, really? So that's why I'm always so stuck Daniels. with it. Stormy Daniels. You're kind of creepy, but I have to say, she has nice legs. Yeah. I'd also order two of those. Two Stormies? Yeah, Stormy Daniels. It's like, yeah, it's like a dark and stormy, except with whiskey, right? Jack Daniels? It'll probably be out there before you know it. Yeah, man. I'll take it. I'll have a Stormy Daniels. Mm. When you order the Stormy Daniels, you just can't tell anyone that you ordered it. <laughs> right? Are you drunk? Mm. 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 Uh, yesterday, we talked about Murphy Brown coming back. That's right. You know what else is coming back? Oh, no. The XFL. WWE Chairman Vince McMahon says he's bringing back the XFL. Uh, you remember this was the professional football league that crashed and burned after one season on NBC back in 2001. Basically, he announced he's funding it all by himself. I guess he got $100 million from cashing in some WWE stock last month. Uh, the plan is that the season will kick off in January of 2020 with eight teams of 40 players. They haven't chosen any of the cities, media partners, blah, blah, blah. The crazy thing is the original version of the XFL was like, it's more dangerous. It's crazy. Like... We do what we want. They right. literally hired strippers to be the, the cheerleaders, cheerleaders. Right. Right. And and the XFL, so you know, you covered it, but the XFL literally lasted a year. And when you yeah, see the season. ratings, like it just it just died. It started strong and went down because it was all just BS at some point. Okay. You did a show. Yeah. About the XFL to try to get, you know, to start in radio. I, I, wanted, a sh I wanted a shot to do a talk show. Right. And uh, so the XFL came out. And I'm working at a sports station. And they, they cover the Ravens. So it's all these guys that take themselves way too seriously. So I go to the program director. I said, hey, man, no one's covering the XFL. He said, of course no one's covering it. I said, no, I understand that. What I'm saying is, let me do a show on it. He said, why? I said, Cause I just want to do a goddamn talk show. And this is an excuse. So basically it's an AM station. And the show came on. I want to say technically 1 a.m. Sunday morning, but what you'd perceive as Saturday night. Right? All right. So, th so they let me do the show, this other guy, who also wanted to get on the air. And so we covered the same. We cut up the highlights and all that. But like anything, and you know how this goes, we would start talking about that. And within 15 minutes, it descended into the chaos. I was going to ask. We, it, I, okay, I have some basic no questions. Time, yeah. See what you can remember. Mm -hmm. At the time, how many teams were in the initial XFL? I believe there were eight. There was L.A., Orlando. San Francisco, Memphis, Birmingham, LA, uh, Las Vegas. I don't think Vegas was in there. Those are the ones I can remember off the top of my head. Who was their biggest star? Tommy Maddox. Tommy Maddox, Tommy Maddox. man. In okay. fact, he played his one season in the there was XFL. A, there was a game. The next time they he saw me. him, he was playing. Uh, he was the starting quarterback for Pittsburgh. the Steelers, mm -hmm. and then he got blown up on a play in Baltimore. I was at that game. So I and remember Roethlisberger the, came. Well, they brought out this guy, Roethlisberger, who's a rookie. So as a Ravens fan, I remember this about the game, because Tommy Maddox was out there, and he was serviceable. It wasn't awful, right? But he gets demolished on this play. So no one knew how to say Roethlisberger's name even. Like, we're looking at this program, like, Ro roll, I'm like who the hell is this guy? And everyone's already being celebratory and drinking beer. Because Maddox was doing pretty well. Though. This is early in the second half, but the Ravens already had a lead. And the one thing I really remember about this game is we were like, this Roethlisberger guy seems kind of scary because he led the offense down the field on mm -hmm. two consecutive touch. This is a rookie. It wasn't even his first start. This is just his first game. He started the next week. Dude literally walks off the bench, leads his team down the field, and the defense, we've been stopping Pittsburgh all game. And this guy carved us up, right? So we're like, all right, well, whatever, you know, beginner's luck. We get the ball back, do what we always do, nothing. Pittsburgh gets the ball back. Roethlisberger leads the team down the field again, and luckily time ran out in that game, and we were like, that guy might be scared. Let me show you how this all comes full circle. If you read the In Touch article, mm -hmm. Stormy Daniels is supposed to go down and meet Donald Trump in the downstairs bar. Okay. They go down, and who is Donald Trump talking to, according to her testimony, according to her story? Tommy Maddox. Ben Roethlisberger. No. Oh, yeah. Really? Then he left, so she has to sit there and talk to Roethlisberger for 30 minutes. And then Roethlisberger, according to the In Touch article, 
took her back and dropped her off at her t- hotel room. Yeah, I'm sure that's what he did. He's and known then, for that. Yes, he, that's what he's known that for. That was all yeah. uh, what she said. Uh, the original XFL, by the way, eight teams. The Birmingham Thunderbolts. Got them. Chicago Enforcers. Damn it, didn't have Chicago. You forgot the New York Jersey Hitmen. Right. The Orlando Rage. New Rage. Jersey Hitmen? Yeah, they were the Hitmen. Oh, the Las Vegas Outlaws, the oh. LA Extreme, the Memphis Ma- Maniacs. Maniacs. Maniacs, yeah. And then the San Francisco Demons. Damn, that's dark. Woo! Uh, yeah, the league only lasted a year. But wait, so that one was more extreme. You couldn't, right. you couldn't fair catch the ball. This one, this one, they're saying McMahon is saying it's going to be shorter, faster paced, family friendly, and easier to understand. Which is kind of odd to me, right? Because they're also promising the games are going to be quicker. And it's like I was telling Mike, like number one, like you could say you want less fouls, but I don't want to watch a game with dudes holding the whole time. You're just not calling fouls because no. you want the game to go quick. Right. Well, it's funny, because the one thing you point out, it's like, when they originally did it, right, it's supposed to be so much more brutal. And I'm reading this stuff at McMahon yesterday, and he's like, well, hey, man, the NFL's gotten too brutal, so, you know, we're going to dial that stuff back a little bit. I'm like, wait, your whole premise, I mean, whatever, it'll be what it'll be. But he said he's going to suck away the stupid stuff that he had the XFL. Yeah, and I, it just seems odd. It, the biggest thing to me is I like that it's all about a time thing, like... Have you guys watched Monday Night Raw? It's over three hours long. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a pain in the butt. Yes. So it's just kind of fun. And then also it seems crazy to me that it's going to be like family friendly and this and that. Like, well, you're not going to get the best players, number one, from the NFL. Right. So if you're not being kind of more extreme, like, what are you offering? Subrate, like, second class or second guys that are second best? He probably wants to create league. a feeder league. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I, you're I gotta be you're not taking on the NFL. So I, right. I mean, he knows and, no, and nobody does. Well, right. No. This ha- we've seen this th- these leagues pop up. It's happened countless times again. Like y- you're not going to knock them off. Uh, I like that he says supposedly no one with a criminal record could play in the NF- XFL. Not even <laughs> DUI. <laughs> right, so does that mean Johnny Manziel is already out? Uh, who, like, who would be in? Well, all right. So a lot of people. So the, here's the three name- names that came up a bunch: Johnny Manziel. Okay, right? he wouldn't be in. But if he if you can't have a criminal record, he's out. Uh, Kaepernick. Which he said he'd be fine having Kaepernick play, but you also have to stand in this league for the national anthem. So you figure Kaepernick's probably out. And then the only one, the, I mean, basically it sounds like they're building a league for Tip Tebow. <laughs> oh, great. That'll get him. <laughs> right? I mean, who knows, man? People love Tebow. Maybe he comes back. So Jay Uso can't play. WWE tag team wrestler. Oh. Just got busted for a Dewey. Mm hmm. <sighs> He's going to have to keep being a wrestler. Can't play for it. Just keep wrestling, man. Yeah. I, I mean, mean I, you know, I understand all of this. This makes sense. I don't know. It just seems like a complete departure. And again, I mean, I know Vince McMahon is very successful in a lot of things. I think he just has something inside of him that wants to do this. But it just like, like to me, it's like, man, I think you gave it honestly a great shot. And they took a lot of stuff from the XFL. But the sky cam, all that. Yeah, all that kind of the access and the and inside mm-hmm. the huddles and this and that. Like, I, I just don't see that working. It would be hard to tell. I think a lot of these guys uh, always wanted to have an NFL team, and they've been shut out so many times. I'm sure it's exactly to, what it is. But they're getting a little bitter, and they want to take I a little chunk of the change. If they keep their expectations where they need to be, then you could have a successful league. But it's going to be what it's going to be. But no, You know what I mean? Like arena football still around. But right, you but temper your expectations right, about football, like, it's not. You're not going to try to convince yourself you're taking out the NFL. You understand what it is. You know exactly how many people watch this thing, how many people physically go to the games. And hopefully, if you're smart, it's like running a restaurant or anything that has inventory. Don't over-order what, what people are demanding. Right. And at this point, now, granted, there is a bunch of shady stuff going on in college athletics. But, of like, course. there's no way around it. Like, our colleges are the feeder league to the yeah, NFL. 100%. You know? 100%. And, I mean, even if you offer a kid some money to come play in your league before he gets to the pros, like, I sorry. There's still, there's still going to be a ton of blue chip athletes that want to go to a big college and play. But I think a lot of times what you get in a league like this is more like, like you didn't get drafted, you got cut from the practice squad. Right? I mean, and yeah. those are the guys that go where it's like, look, you can get a tape, right? Not the long and short of it. You stay mm, in shape. Get some reps. You're, right. Get some reps, man. Maybe pick up your technique a little bit and you get back on the team next year. I think those are the people he's going to appeal to most. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, Reba McIntyre, good news. She's the first female Colonel Sanders. All right. All right, Reba. <laughs> Reba. Uh, Reba, they, Las Vegas. You remember some of the other Colonel Sanders have been Daryl Hammond, Norm MacDonald, Rob Riggle, Jim Gaffigan. All men. Mm-hmm. Now Reba. Now Reba's getting in there. I was wondering today when I walked in, you were talking about Reba McIntyre and fried chicken. And I was like, 
You've been talking about fried chicken for three days. We're still talking about it. But now I realize you you had read this update. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I walked in. I was like, why? If I had, I'm going, why are we talking about Reba McIntyre chicken? I just had fried chicken. Come on. i got to have it again tonight, though. It'll be good. Thank you, Ted. I appreciate it. All right, we've got headlines coming up with Mike Hawk in minutes. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A 75-year-old Indiana man who baked pot cookies for his church has been ordered by a judge to stay out of trouble. Meanwhile, a bar in Manhattan is banned a word, and if you say it, they will kick you out on the double. Good times at Gay Paris as 52 baboons escape Paris Zoo. A diplomat claims immunity in Canada when his rent is two months past due. And survey says we should all be managers at In-N-Out Burger. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my call. All right, an amazing happening in Louisiana as a pair of amateur golfers have done the practically impossible. <laughs> and I look, and I see one ball, and I see it's my ball. Then I see another ball. And I said, y'all, there's two balls in here. <laughs> the two of them hit a hole-in-one on the same hole right after one another. Wow. Come on. Well, Damn. look, man, it had to be verified. There had to be, somebody else had to see that happen. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it happened. But somebody else had to see it. So, so they're, they're not lying. But they wouldn't be, or it wouldn't be, a, uh, wouldn't be a story. Yep, they both got certificates, so. Did you Probably uh, keep them with them so mm-hmm. they can prove it That's to people. Right, uh, That's right. That's right. I suppose that's the only golf course I mean, that, gonna, that'll give out a certificate for a hole in one. I mean, if you're going to say yeah, you got a hole in right? one, yeah. you should produce the certificate. Yeah. Do I have so to go are we through, all in I, agreement on this? Do I have to go through these boxes? <laughs> yeah. Show the certificate. Can I, yes. can I just bring You've it been a, talking about this hole in one for 13 years. <laughs> can I bring it? Oh, I have two of them. Can I bring in a scorecard? <laughs> you know what, man? <laughs> you're like Obama, them. born in Kenya. <laughs> we call you out on it. You yeah, won't produce yeah, a birth yeah. certificate. Release the memo, Miles. Exactly. He's a birther. Miles is a birther. He's wearing Obama socks. What does he do with his socks? He's wearing Obama socks. He's got a Kenyan. He has Obama socks. Oh my God! It's Obama's <laughs> face on your socks. It's sock Obama. <laughs> the sock Obama. Rock him, sock Obama. <laughs> so Obama. That is kind of like the thing, though, right? Uh, well, it's a pre- I don't have the certificate, but I have a scorecard. Right? I mean, I we mean, need the certificate. You, you mean that scorecard that you filled out? I got the socks. <laughs> you got a birth scorecard? Right. I was playing alone. I drew this in kindergarten. It's my birth All certificate. All right, damn it. I'm going to start digging into boxes and find it. <laughs> we tonight. just want to confirm that this Jesus happened, man. Christ. A video, something. Ah. <laughs> Seems fair to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <clears throat> I see Mike and I were very excited mm-hmm. when we read that story this morning. Yes. Like these two random people got a hole in one. <laughs> right after each other, too. That's the thing, is That's that impressive. nobody ever gets a hole in one. Nobody here would ever <laughs> think about maybe getting a hole in one. If I did, I'd have that certificate to let you know. Right, I'd hang that in the office. Look, I got a <laughs> tournament coming up, man. If I hit a hole in one, everyone's got to pay me twenty bucks. All right, I'm in. I would tell you. You hit a hole in one in the next tournament you play in. The very next one, I'll give you a Benji. You give me. Well, everybody's giving me twenty. All right, I'm give you I'm that confident. Anybody, anybody, anybody hits a hole in one, everybody got to pay up twenty bucks. That's yours. okay. All right, fair enough. I'm I'm in. In. Yeah, I don't care about the rest of your group. You hit one, you got it. Okay. Around the world in Indiana, a man uh, that was caught giving cookies to his fellow churchgoers that were laced with marijuana has been given a deal. Deal. (laughs) The prosecutor signed a deferred (laughs) prosecution agreement due to the man's health and age that will dismiss charges if he has no more criminal activity for the next two years. Okay. Basically because they don't know if he's going to survive those next two years. That's got to make him feel good. Right. Well, he's 75 years old. But we think you might die. Have some cookies, Margaret. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey. <laughs> I see Jesus. I bet Space you Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking on the sea of tranquility. <clears throat> An undercover agent in He's Florida. walking on bong water. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. Islands are just little nugs, man. <laughs> His sandals would smell disgusting. I would smell... Uh, sm- <laughs> I'd smoke ocean nugs, bruh. I mean, technically, I think Space Jesus, given where he grew up, would be uh, smoking hashish. <laughs> That's a good point. God, moving on. This is getting bad. Oh. An undercover agent in Florida just bagged a store clerk for fraud after he handed her a winning lotto ticket worth $600. But instead of the full amount, the clerk gave him a mere $5 and pocketed the remainder for herself. Oh, no, you didn't. The agent returned later and arrested her for larceny grand theft, and they found the winning ticket stashed in her notebook. Damn, man, for $600. Mm-hmm. Right. You go to jail for $600 goddamn dollars. Well, and are there really that many people that are just bringing the card in? How much did I win? That 
I mean, they they have self check stands now that'll tell you how much you won. I I'm with you. I, I don't agree, but you know, if you're the clerk and you think that you're with someone that stupid, you're gonna you're maybe gonna try the scam. I just don't get the racket. It's, it's just, funny you say uh, you go to jail for six hundred bucks. Yeah, I read a story about a guy who literally said, "I will go to jail over barbecue sauce," and did. Wow. Oh my. I God. mean, wow, <laughs> wow. That should be a question. What would you go to jail for? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. I was about to be like, ranch. <laughs> Give me the ranch dressing. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza. Straight out of Lethal Weapon in Canada, a landlord is left with his hands in his pockets after his tenant had a trump card for why he didn't have to pay his rent. Diplomatic immunity. Oh, those guys. That's such crap. Oh, man. Are you those people, man. We, we, uh, you just see the cars in D.C. Oh, and you're God, like, oh, yeah. man. You're just like... Due to a noise complaint about her, the diplomat agreed to move out of the complex, but left two months later than agreed upon and without paying the thousands of dollars in rent that she owed because diplomatic immunity. They're now launching an investigation into this, seeing if diplomatic immunity does actually cover that, which I'm thankful I would guess about. that it does. If it's about the law, it seems like it can get away with it. Right. That's know. it for your headlines with that. Mike Hawk is out. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the random question. Question, your guess is as good as mine. And ask the men's room. Yes, indeed. It is all true. But, bitches, in the meantime, until we meet again, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful.